Let's look at an introduction to the hypergeometric distribution, another important discrete probability distribution. I'm going to assume you know this combinations formula, both its meaning and how to calculate it, because it plays a central role in the hypergeometric distribution. Let's open with an example. Suppose six doctors and 19 nurses attend a small conference, and all 25 names are put in a hat and five names are randomly picked without replacement, like might be the case if they were drawing five door prizes or something like that. What is the probability that four doctors and one nurse are picked? Okay, well one of the keys here is that we are picking these names without replacement. And by without replacement we mean once a name has been picked once, it is removed and it cannot be picked again. And so that implies that these trials are not independent and that the binomial distribution would not be appropriate. A little more on that in a bit. Well, let's just try and think this through. We want to know the probability that four doctors and one nurse are picked. If we're randomly selecting five names, then these five names are all equally likely if those names are properly mixed up and what have you. And that's the probability that we pick four doctors and one nurse is simply the number of samples that result in four doctors and one nurse over the total number of possible samples of size five. So recall there were six doctors and 19 nurses for 25 people altogether. Our total number of possible samples then, of size 5, is 25 choose 5, our combinations formula, the number of ways of picking 5 items from 25 total. Now on the numerator we need the number of ways of getting 4 doctors and 1 nurse. Well, there are 6 doctors, and from those 6 doctors we must pick 4 of them. And there are 19 nurses, and from those 19 nurses we must pick 1. And so just 6 choose 4 times 19 choose 1 over 25 choose 5. And if you use the combinations formula appropriately here, we'll see that this is equal to 15 times 19 over 53,130. Punch that into your calculator, see that this is 0 0.00536 rounded to 5 decimal places. Well, as mentioned previously, it is not appropriate to use the binomial distribution here. Since the sampling is done without replacement, that probability of success is going to change from trial to trial depending on what happened before. So for example, suppose on the first draw, the first draw, there's six doctors out of 25 people total. The probability of getting a doctor is simply six out of 25 on the first draw. But suppose the first draw was a doctor. Then, that name is taken out. And on the second draw, the probability of getting a doctor is going to be 5, because there's 5 remaining doctors out of the 24 people. That's the probability of getting a doctor on the second draw, given the first draw was a doctor. And these are not equal. And so the probability of a success depends on what's happening in those other trials. And so one of those major conditions of independence for the binomial distribution is not satisfied here. But had the sampling been done with replacement, with replacement, meaning if a person's name is picked, we look at it, we call them, we give them their prize, and then their name goes back in and we shake it all up again, then the probability of getting a doctor on any one trial would still just be 6 out of 25. And we simply throw this all into the binomial formula. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this binomial formula here, but this would be the appropriate binomial formula. And if we put all of that in, we get 0 0.0126. Now compare that to the probability we found previously doing the sampling without replacement using the hypergeometric distribution. There we found a probability of 0 0.00536. And the probability found from the binomial distribution with replacement is actually a fair bit different from that. Now we just thought it through a little bit in that calculation, but let's formalize this a bit. Suppose we are randomly sampling n objects without replacement from a source that contains a successes and n minus a failures. So there's capital N objects all together, and there's only two types, the successes, and there's a of those, and the n minus a failures. And we're going to let the random variable x represent the number of successes in that sample then the random variable x has the hypergeometric distribution, where the probability the random variable x takes on the value little x is equal to this quantity over here. And this notation confuses people sometimes, so we just write it as p of x, sometimes with this probability. But you can take a look through this and see what that is all about. I recommend that when you're actually doing these probability calculations, you don't focus on the formula, and you simply work it out logically. I'm also going to let you think about this down here. The minimum value x can take on 
is this. And the maximum value X can take on is this. I'm going to let you think about that a little bit and why that would be the case, but that's the appropriate minimum and maximum. I know it says max and min. Think about that a little bit, why that's the case. Another thing we might be interested in is the mean. And the mean of a hypergeometric distribution is little n, the number of things we're sampling, times the number of successes over the total number of objects. And this might look a little bit like the n times p of binomial, and it is quite a bit like that. Now, there is also a formula for the variance, but I'm not going to put it down here because it's a little bit complicated. If you need the variance of a hypergeometric distribution, then I suggest you look it up. Let's look at a different example here. Suppose a large urn contains 400 red marbles and 600 blue marbles. A lot of these hypergeometric problems are phrased in terms of urns and marbles and balls and all of this kind of thing. And a random sample of 10 marbles is drawn without replacement. What is the probability exactly 3 are red? If we let the random variable x represent the number of red marbles, then we are looking for the probability that x is equal to 3. And again, I strongly recommend you don't simply just throw it into that formula. We just logically think through it. Most people find that easier. So what we need to do is come up with the total number of ways of picking three red marbles in our sample, exactly three, over the total number of possible samples. In the bottom here, there are 1,000 objects altogether. 400 plus 600, 1,000 marbles. So from those 1,000, we are picking 10. And in the numerator, it's going to be the number of ways of getting exactly three red marbles. Well, there are 400 red marbles, and from those we must pick three. But we're not done yet, because if we're going to get exactly three red marbles in our sample of 10, the other seven must be blue. So we need to multiply this by the number of ways of picking seven blue marbles from 600. 400 choose three times 600 choose seven over 1,000 choose 10. One of the things you might notice here is that 400 plus 600 is equal to 1,000, and 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. It's not a coincidence. It's always got to work out like that. So it's a good double check to see if you're on the right path. If that's not the case, you've made a mistake. If you put this into your calculator or computer, you'll see that this is equal to 0 0.2155 to four decimal places. And if you must use the formula here, then n, capital N, represents a total number of objects, which is 1,000. Little n represents the number we are sampling, which is 10. A is the number of successes, which is the 400 red marbles. And if we put all of these into the formula from the last page, it would simply be what we have over here. But most people find it easier to just think through it logically, and then it makes more sense as well. What would happen if we just used the binomial formula instead? If we said, ah, forget about all of that, uh, with replacement, without replacement. Let's just say the chance of getting a red marble is 400 over 1,000 or 0.4, and just use our regular old binomial formula. Ignore the fact we're doing it without replacement. What would have happened there? If you put this into your calculator, you'll see that this is equal to 0 0.2150, rounded to four decimal places. Now, that is not the correct probability. Recall in the last slide, when we used the hypergeometric distribution, we found the true probability of 0 0.2155. But wait a minute, this is pretty close to that. So calculating it with the binomial distribution in this setting got pretty close to the right answer. And that leads us to this point. The binomial distribution can sometimes provide a reasonable approximation to the hypergeometric. And it provides a reasonable approximation if we're not sampling a very large proportion of the population. And as a rough guideline, if we are not sampling more than 5% of the population, then the binomial distribution provides a reasonable approximation. And if we took a look back at this example here, we only sampled 10 marbles from the 1,000 total. So we were only sampling 1% of our entire population. And so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that the binomial distribution actually provided a reasonable approximation in this case.